We're back with another exciting episode of Simple Meals. Coach Andrew, it's great to see you. How are you? I'm doing great, Ravi. It's great to see you. How are you? I'm doing very well. And today you're going to make one of your favorite recipes that's super fast. It's all about fast, simple, easy meals on this show. And I'm going to time you and we're going to see how long it takes. Yeah, that's going to be fun. All right. But before we get into that, I would love to have you tell the audience a little bit about yourself, how long you've been with Mastering Diabetes and the type of results your clients see. Oh, sure. Um, let's see. I am a registered dietitian, nutritionist. Um, I live in Michigan. I actually changed my life uh, midlife to go back to school to become a registered dietitian so that I could contribute to the plant-based revolution because I had gone vegan back in 2012 and it had such a profound impact on me that I wanted to help other people um, have the same impact. So I've been with Mastering Diabetes for about a year and a couple months. It's been a wonderful journey. I'm so grateful to be here. Um, and I think that's it. Was there another part of the yeah, question? Yeah, no, I mean, like we have had, it's been such a pleasure to have you on the team. Um, we have a, such a diverse background. I know, I mean, you have a background coming in from, you know, more of like a corporate world to a certain yeah. extent. You cha totally changed your life, which I think is such an example of anybody out there. Like you can, you can do whatever you want, right? Like yeah. when it comes to health, nutrition, sure. Like when it comes to your career, which also I think impacts health. I, mean, I think you're a great example of that. Oh, absolutely. Oh my gosh. I finally, I will tell you, I, I had a career in, uh, finance, corporate finance, investment banking um, early in my life, and then uh, resigned from that to find some more purpose in my life, tried a couple different things. And I finally found my purpose. I really felt that I discovered who I was once I went plant-based. Mm -hmm. It was so important to me to um, be kind to animals. That was really my why. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. I started learning about what happens to the planet um, due to uh, eating mm -hmm. animals. And I thought, wow, this is something that I want to jump into the uh, the uh, revolution to help people change their diet for their own health. And of course, I learned about human health and the miracle that plant-based diets are. And I thought, wow, one, two, three, animals, planet, human health. It doesn't get better than that. And I finally found my purpose. That's right. You went back, you, you got the education you needed. So you're a registered dietitian. And yeah. You work with clients, like you do private coaching, you do small yeah. group coaching. Uh, you know, tell us maybe a story or two of some of your favorite clients. Oh my gosh, that's it's such a great question. I love them all. It's hard to figure out a favorite, but let's see. Um, I, I have a private client right now who's just an absolutely wonderful woman. She discovered she had a pretty high A1C, hemoglobin A1C. She came to private coaching and um, she started out without quite realizing it with um, fasting blood glucose in the 300s, wow. which really shocked her. Uh, she, was not, she was very surprised and scared. And we jumped into the program and literally within a week, and she was so committed to her health and just so committed to embracing changes. Um, within a week, her numbers were down to the 200s. Now she is seeing them dip down into the mid 100, sometimes sub 100, and it's only been a little over two weeks. It's been incredible. Um, I had a woman wrap up. She's in private coaching. I had a really neat woman wrap up recently from small group who came in. She, her blood glucose was around 212 when she started her fasting. It had been in the 400s a week or two before she joined, which is why she joined. She made healthful changes. It came down to about 200. After six weeks, her blood glucose was about 156. She had lost 10 pounds. She really understood where she needed to go. And she was just incredibly thrilled. And oh my gosh, I could tell so many more stories because this program is so yeah. wonderful and effective. It's amazing how fast a lot of these changes happen. Okay. Oh, and yeah. again, it's good. more carbohydrate rich foods, lowering the fat. So that's, that's the key here. So why don't we get into the recipe? I know people are excited about this. So yeah. what are you going to be making? And you let me know when to start the timer. Okay, super. I'm going to be making a pico de gallo. I actually know it as salsa fresca because I spent some time earlier in my life living in Mexico. This is where I taught myself to make this because I was having salsa fresca at little um, uh, roadside taco stands and uh, restaurants. And I just loved it so much. I just looked at what the ingredients were and I started making it. So I call it salsa fresca. And um, it's just absolutely delicious. It's one of my favorite um, 
dishes to make because it goes with practically every plant-based recipe you can imagine. And it just adds that extra special touch and extra taste. And it's only got five ingredients. And we're going to see how quickly I, how long it takes to make it. I think it's very fast. Okay. So, I'm, I'm going to hit the timer right now. Okay. You ready? Here we okay. go. All Here right. Go. So I'll just quickly tell everybody really quick. Maybe we start the timer. Okay. We're going to, we'll, 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 we'll give you a break. And we'll also, guys, if you want to okay. take, if you want to take a picture of the ingredients on the screen, you can do that now. And then we'll probably take it down so it's easier to see everything Coach Andrea is doing. But go ahead. Okay, everybody. This uh, recipe has five ingredients. Tomatoes, a purple onion, jalapeno, or you can use a serrano or whatever pepper you like. Lemon, cilantro. One, two, three. That's it. Now, we can add a couple extra things if you wish, but that's it. It's, it's so easy and it's so fast and so helpful. So, okay, now we can start the timer. Okay, here we go. Starting. Okay. So I like to use Roma tomatoes because they really keep their shape when you uh, dice them up. So I'm going to start with that. I've got four Romas. Um, you can use three, you can use five. It's really up to, do, up to you. You will learn to make this recipe suit your taste buds and how much you need for you, for your family, for your friends. I will tell you, this is an amazing recipe for, uh, to take to a party because everybody loves a freshly made salsa. It's true. It's absolutely true. And Romas are such an easy tomato to get. Like year round, you can always find Romas. It's an it's, uh, easy, easy tomato. Oh, absolutely. And I just, they're just so easy to work with. They're really nice and firm. They're easy to slice. Um, uh, and I just personally, I love the flavor. And what I think is so nice about having them in the salsa fresca, picaro gallo, is that they do keep their shape. So, um, you know, it's it just, uh, I know it's kind of nice and chunky. Now, you yeah. can also, you can make this recipe and then you can put it in a blender or a food processor and blend it up and make it more of um, kind of a liquidy salsa. Uh -huh. Yeah. It's almost like a soup. Yeah, exactly. All right. Okay. And so I see you put the cutting board on top of a towel and that makes the cutting board more stable. Exactly. I meant to do that before I started and I forgot. And you're absolutely right. My cutting board uh, kind of um, slips around on the counter. So you can put a towel underneath it or you can put a, a dampened um, paper towel and it does the same thing. And it really makes your cutting surface so much safer. Yes. Which is very important. It reminds me, like I, I also wanted to remind you, let's be safe here. Like the, there's no speed record is worth uh, cutting yourself, right? But you look like you're very efficient and graceful. <laughs> I love that you say that because I really think of myself still as such a hack in the uh -huh. kitchen. I am not an expert cook, but I really love to be here and I'd love to just do my best. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. No, no, but I, I have learned some good safe techniques. I try my best to keep my left hand in a claw so I don't have any chance of cutting my fingers off or, or you know, just cutting myself in any way. Yeah. All hard. right. One more tomato. How are we doing on time, Robbie? We're doing great. We're at two minutes and 36 seconds. Oh, my gosh. Maybe we're actually going to uh, meet what I thought would be the time, which is about five minutes to make okay, it. Okay. So we'll and see. by the way. I uh, washed all of my produce beforehand. I always do that. I just give it a nice little wash. Mm -hmm. And that's something that could be done even over the weekend. You could clean your produce once you buy it, and then it's like it's in the fridge right already clean. Oh, absolutely. Anything to prepare is going to set you up for success. Yes. Right? Absolutely. Okay, tomatoes are done. Wow, I can't believe it. Next is the onion. Now, I have kind of a medium-sized uh, purple onion here. You use as much onion as you like. I happen to love onion. So I actually use, I generally use quite a bit of onion. My husband loves onion, but not as much as I do, especially raw onion. He's not as big a fan. So he would prefer to put less in here. So you just have to figure out what will work with your taste buds, with the taste buds of your, you know, those that you'll be eating with. Um, but, you know, usually about a half of a medium-sized purple onion is a good amount. And I always take the outer surface off. I do my best 
the outer layer. I do my best just to take the papery portion off, but sometimes that's kind of hard. Um, so I will take the whole outer layer off. Yeah. Okay. So here we go. I'm just going to dice this baby up. It's a good reminder that every recipe is certainly can be customized to your own preferences. Don't ever forget that. Absolutely. Have you heard about the technique of uh, if you cut with your tongue out, it, it, the onions, it, it, it won't make your eyes water? I, <laughs> I did hear uh, Cyrus tell us that. I haven't tried it yet. Does it work? Have you tried it? I can't say that I have tried it, but I, I have a feeling it's going to work. I think it's just pure science. Yeah, it makes sense. He said that um, the whatever the, the volatile compound is that comes from the onion, it's just looking for a moist surface to land on. So it usually lands on our eyes, but if we put our tongue out, it'll land there. 100%. I love it. it might give you some onion breath, but you're going to have onion breath anyway. Because That's true. Onion. That's true. Okay, mm -hmm. done with the onion. Next is the jalapeno. I like, you know, this, you use as much as you want based on how hot you like your food. I will use a half uh, because I like hot, but I don't like it hot to be overpowering. So I'll cut it in half. The other trick, if you're someone who doesn't like hot, I mean, you could leave it out. The other thing you could do is um, you can take the seeds out because the seeds are particularly hot. If you take the seeds out, you're going to make it just that much more mild. Mm -hmm. So I'm using half. And can I tell you, Robbie, my husband and I make this virtually every week. Amazing. Because it goes with everything. You know, we eat tons of beans, tons of lentils, potatoes, sweet potatoes, rice, other grains, quinoa. It goes with everything. How long will it last in the fridge? Okay. So it really will stay good for about two days. You could eat it on day three, but because of the acid from the tomatoes and the lemon, it will start to get a little bit, um, it's not as good. It gets a little okay. strong. Okay, perfect. Yeah, but here's the thing. I don't think once uh, once our members and friends who are watching make this, I don't think it's going to last two days. I agree. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> it's just that good. Oh, another quick tip for lemons, because this was a game changer for me. If you get lemons that are really hard, you know, sometimes that happens. They're just rock hard. You're like, I'm never going to get any, I'm never going to get any juice out of these babies. Mm. What you do is you put them on your cutting board, you use your weight. You do it before you cut, I shouldn't have cut. And then you roll, roll, roll every which way mm -hmm. and it makes it nice and soft. And then it's really easy to squeeze and you get more juice out of it. That's brilliant, absolutely okay. brilliant. So I took a half of a lemon, you can use lime. We love lime too, we just have a lot of lemons in our house. I'm going to start with, I'm not gonna squeeze the whole half because I'll taste it, I'll do like a quarter. I'll taste it first because I don't want to make it too lemony. I love lemon, but we want to um, be careful uh, about how much we use just so that it's not too tart. And again, it depends on how much you love lemon. I love lemon. I'll, I'll probably end up putting more. All right. Next, cilantro. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I said this earlier, but this is the other key ingredient. I'm a big fan of cilantro. I use tons of cilantro. This is about half of a normal bunch. I'm going to eat all this. You may not want that much. You may want more. Again, it's up to you. I think I put in the recipe that you uh, should use a cup of cilantro, but again, it's totally up to you. Oh, one other quick thing is that you could take the time just to take every single uh, stem and just take the leaves off, right? But I, I will do that sometimes if I have time, but if I'm just trying to make something quickly, I think the stem is fine. It's perfectly edible. So what I do is I just find where the leaves basically end and I cut there. This makes life so much easier. Yeah, I and think then, so. And um, then if there's some particularly, you know, big, thick stems, I might get rid of those. So I'll just take a quick peek through. I'll take a couple off here. But it's all edible. It's all incredibly helpful. You're never going to go wrong by having a little bit of stem in your food here. Yeah, it's not going to hurt. That's for sure. Do you like cilantro, Roddy? You know, um, I think can't say I love it. I can't say I. I'm like, uh, I'm a, if it's in a salad or something. I, I bet it, it. If I had this exact recipe, I'm sure I would like it. Uh, in, in this type of dish, it's perfect. Uh, yeah. But yeah. So, I, well, guys in the chat right box, let us see if you love cilantro, right? And and if you don't like cilantro, I'm I'm curious. Yeah. 
And Robbie, I'm glad you brought that up and you were honest that you're not a big cilantro fan because look, if you don't like cilantro, don't put cilantro in here, yeah. still make the salsa and either you could leave a green out or you literally, you could put, I put spinach in here sometimes. If you wanted to, you could put parsley, it would give it a different flavor, but it would still be good. Maybe a little bit more like a tabule in a way. Mm -hmm. um, again, customize, customize to your preferences so that you enjoy, and not just enjoy, so that you love. Food. Yeah. What okay. if somebody if somebody only had lime available, would that be okay instead of lemon? Oh, lime's great. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And lime would be probably much more traditionally um used in a place like Mexico. I only yeah. used limes when I used to when I was living in Mexico. Uh-huh. Very cool. Okay. So I give those a rough chop because I really like to feel those in here. And that's basically it. I'm going to mix it up. How are we doing on time, Robbie? We're at nine minutes and 52 seconds. Okay. So I went a little long uh, by adding a little, yeah. uh, you know, uh, color through explaining some things. I really think you could cut a couple minutes off this and it still would be great. You'd still make it. Yeah, in, absolutely. In Easy. Time. For sure. Okay, everybody. So this, here we go. We are basically done. I'm going to show this to you. Oh, that looks beautiful. This is your beautiful salsa fresca. Okay. I always do put, I like, I use a little bit of iodized salt in my cooking. So I'll sprinkle just a little bit, not very much, just a little touch uh, to add a little bit of flavor. And then I'm going to taste it and just see what I think. So. Yeah. Here. I love that the taste test is key. You got to make sure you love what you made. Yeah, of course. Usually I find you have to add a little more lemon. So. Oh. Oh no, that's absolutely perfect. So oh, I love it. a quarter of a lemon was perfect. Oh man, I wish I could share this with you. It is so good. Okay, one other quick thing. You can add some more flavor. This is cumin. We um, we use a porter and pestle, a pestle, mortar, mortar and pestle. And we, um, we make our own ground cumin. We always have it around. Some cumin is delicious on this. You don't have to, but it's really good. Another great uh, spice you can use is, what to, oops, I forgot to get it out. Here it is. Oh, well, one of my favorites is the, um, Mrs. Dash. Now, this one's a little spicy. I don't know if you can see that. It's called extra spicy. But another one is called um, Southwest Chipotle. That is mm -hmm. delicious on top of this. It gives it really a, um, a Latin American, Mexican uh, flavor. Beautiful. Okay, Beautiful. so we're done with this. That's it. Now what I want to do is show you how it's so wonderful to add this to one of my personal favorite dishes, which is a burrito bowl, which I eat every single week. Let's see. Sometimes it. more than once, maybe two, three times in a week. Love it. And voila. Here we go. I'm going to show you how easy this dish is. Okay. Here is my burrito bowl. I that. have two cups of arugula on the bottom. Okay. I have more than a cup of black beans. You can use any beans. You can use lentils. You can use peas if you want. I have about three quarters cup of corn from frozen. The beans, I just took them right out of the can today. Easy peasy. The corn is from frozen. And then you could put a grain here. I chose today to use cauliflower rice, but you could use brown rice. You could use quinoa. You could use millet. You could use any grain. Or you could leave the grain out. It's totally okay. What I do want to say about the cauliflower rice is that um, if you're someone who's coming in and you really, you're, you're struggling with insulin resistance and your blood glucose tends to really kind of spike in the beginning of your journey with uh, particularly carbohydrate dense foods like rice and potatoes, go ahead and use cauliflower rice in the beginning because this is a non-starchy vegetable. It's extraordinarily healthy. It's going to help keep your blood glucose lower with this meal and it still gives you that um, experience of a grain. Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. So, yep. Here we go. Now, what we're going to do is just make this look so beautiful by topping it with, oh my gosh. Oh man. Okay. So here it is with the salsa fresca. How beautiful. That is beautiful. Is this? Just How beautiful absolutely beautiful. beautiful. Yeah. I mean, that is so delicious. And then the last thing I'm going to mention is if you want, you can use a little bit of avocado. Avocado is a yellow light. Uh, food just because it's naturally higher in fat. 
it's a healthy fat, but you don't want to be um, consuming excess fat in a meal because that can contribute to insulin resistance. But every once in a while, you can have some avocado. You just want to be mindful of the amount. So what I'm going to suggest, if you want a little avocado, don't use any more than about an eighth, okay, which is a quarter of a half. So a half of an avocado in generally is about 15 grams of carbohydrates. So a half is about seven and a half. Um, and then another half of that is, gosh, let's call it four. So what I do is I just cut it in four and then I use my spoon and I just spoon out one of those little triangles. Um, you could cut it if you wanted to. And boom, I've probably only added about four grams of fat to this dish. I am well within Mastering Diabetes guidelines of under 10 grams and between 10 and 15% of calories. This is a beautiful, beautiful dish. It's so simple. Uh, I love that you showed how the beans were from a can. That, that, was, that was easy. The cauliflower rice, that's something you could buy already made up. You didn't have to like put it in a food processor and rice it up. Like There's so many convenience items out there. And you're showing us exactly how you do this in your personal life yeah, and how everybody else can do it as well. Absolutely. And I have to tell you that um, I actually got everything prepared, ready to go, including making my little burrito bowl between, I had about 10 minutes between coaching sessions this morning and I just got it all ready. It was all ready to go. And then we added about another, oh, let's call it 10 minutes to make the salsa. Boom. Done. That's amazing. Okay, guys, I want to write D in the comment box if this is delicious and you're gonna you're gonna have, you want to have this. All right, I want to see some D's for delicious. Uh, okay, now, Coach Andrew here. Now, if anybody has any questions, you're welcome to put those in the chat box, and and we can uh, we can uh, have have Coach Andrew answer them. But um, this this type of food prep, like. Correct me if I'm wrong, but this is like your mainstay. Like you're not making fancy dishes all the time. Like this is what you've been doing for years. Is that accurate? Oh, yes, absolutely. No, we're not fancy in this household. We just throw together. We have basic staples that we make sure we have in our refrigerator and in our pantry. And then we just throw things together. And I'm telling you, some days I'll eat, um, I'll have some brown rice and some vegetables and then half a can or a whole can of beans. That's it. With That's some it. mustard. Um Maybe, you know, maybe I'll put some tomatoes in there. Yep. Very, very quick and very easy. Absolutely. And these foods, they're satisfying. You have some, some nice calorie dense foods in there, particularly with the beans. Um, and you've also shown how you, you flavor the dishes with the right spices. Okay. The Mrs. Dash products. Uh, like it's, it's that simple combination that makes a actually really, really delicious meal. Oh, absolutely. Yep. You're, you are right on target there. Yep. This in this household, we are quick and easy. But and the thing is, we love it. We actually prefer eating this way and eating more simply. What we have found really is that the more simple we keep our recipes, the more we enjoy them because then we're more able to detect and enjoy each individual flavor 100%. in recipes. Yeah. yeah. Did you find that your taste buds changed significantly when you cleaned up your diet? Oh yes, absolutely. In fact. I realized that there were flavors and foods that I did not think existed or I didn't even know existed because my taste buds had been a little desensitized. And I'll just give you an example. Just last week, my husband brought home a turnip for me and he cut it up raw. I love raw turnips and I could not stop eating those. I couldn't believe it. I mean, I like turnips a lot, but because I actually detected sweetness wow. in amazing. this kind of peppery sort of hot uh, food. I couldn't believe how sweet it was. It was really just wonderful. Delicious. That's, I love that. Okay. A question from Adrian, which actually coach Andrea answered earlier, but we're going to answer it again. So how long will this dish you just made last in the fridge? I think about two days. Yeah. You, you want to, I, I think you'll end up eating quite a bit of it the first day. You might even eat all of it because it's just so tasty. Uh, you, you'd be fine having it the entire next day by day three, it sort of depends on how much lemon or lime you put in there. It might still be okay, but I think that would be probably the end. So two yeah. days. I love it. All right, Coach Andrew, this has been fantastic. I want everybody here listening uh, and watching, if you want to work with Coach Andrew, you want her to be your coach, uh, you want to be in one of her small group sessions, you want to do private coaching with Coach Andrew, like 
you go to mastering.bees.org slash coaching. You can see that on the, on the screen, or I think it's also, uh, mastering diabetes.org slash start e either way it should work. Um, and you book a call and then we can find out exactly what's best for you. But this is another perfect example of what I love about you, Andrew, and our coaching team is that you all are living this lifestyle. Like when you're asking people to do something, you're asking them to, you know, make a different decision at restaurants, you know, travel in a certain way or buy these ingredients and then, Hey, have a prep day, like whatever it is, these are things you, you all do, you know, inside and out, you're speaking from a place of experience, also from a place of, you know, evidence-based guidelines here. And I just think that's really powerful. And, um, it's really nice that later you know, when your coach is sort of like, how, how many times have we had an experience? We go to the doctor and the doctor's telling us to do something that clearly like they're probably not doing right. You know, they're not, they're not like, you know, a picture of health. They're not active. They're not eating this way in their own house. Like, it doesn't feel that good, but that's not what happens at Mastering Diabetes. And so I just want to thank you um, and acknowledge you for everything you do and how grateful we are to have you on the team and all the amazing feedback we get from your clients. So thank you so much. And I really appreciate you making this recipe for us today. Oh, thank you, uh, Robbie. It's been such a pleasure and, and it's been wonderful to be here with everyone today. And thank you for everything you do, bringing these incredible meals and opportunities and options to people so that they have the tools and the meals and the ideas that will enable them to effectively and successfully adopt this new way of eating. So thank you, Ravi. You're doing an amazing service to the world. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much. And thank you to everybody who joined today. Same time, same place next week, one o'clock PM Eastern. We'll have another simple meal for you. In the meantime, please take action. That's what we want more than anything. Don't just, you know, watch videos for entertainment. Like people are watching the food network, like all the time. Like these food shows are unbelievable right? They're not healthy, number one, but number two, like take action. So please make this recipe, take a picture, tag us on whatever social media platform you're using, and we will see you next week. Have a great day. Bye, everybody.